So I'll try and recap a bit quickly what uh, some of what was missed when the sound cuts out. So I think you probably saw from the economic calendar some of what was um, <coughs> Some of what was uh, what was on offer here, but the main things were just to, yeah again doing it a bit quickly than I did the first time around. But um, on Monday, the main thing is the PMIs. We've got personal spending from the U.S. later. These are the big economic events to concentrate on. U.S. factory orders on Tuesday. On Wednesday, it's about the services PMIs. So starting with China, then Europe and the U.K. Um, ADP unemployment data that leads us the first bit of an indication before the non-farm payrolls on Friday. Thursday is the big one for, UK, for the UK, for those FTSE and pound traders, because we've got that triple event from the Bank of England, the interest rate decision, the minutes, and then the inflation report, all taking place in the morning. So that'll be interesting, a few different things to look at there. We can cover that a bit more in detail when I look at the, the pound and the FTSE. Um, as I just was, you saw a bit of the chart there, so I probably don't have to go over that too much. And then Friday is probably the big end of the week in terms of the general macro conditions because we've got the non-farm payrolls. And the reason that's so big is just because um, we've only got two payrolls left to, until September. And September is a date that a lot of people are looking at as a potential first rate hike. <coughs> um, so apologies again for that sound, sound issue there. Um, now, I think a lot of you probably saw what was generally going on in the FTSE there. So I've closed out that. Let's, let's move swiftly on to, to Germany. So <coughs> here was, um, you know, here was, I think, where, so where were we last week? Um, in and around this sort of level, we were dipping down from the high. The first level for me to pay attention to was this area that we'd pulled back into the gap, and it was basically the Thursday, July 2nd peak. So we, and that corresponded with this declining trend line. So that was an area, but then I had the, the this box highlighted as the next area below. That was just a gap that took place the week before. And that is where we ended up holding up, right at the bottom of that gap. So we filled it, we've moved time, we've pushed back through this level as of today quite concretely. So I think maybe this decline was, it was similar to the FTSE, what I was saying there, to the, the UK 100, is that we'd made a lower low. And so it wasn't exactly a strong trend. So we saw this strong reaction um, attributed to what's happened in Greece. Uh, but um, we weren't in a strong uptrend. We'd, we'd made a lower low, followed by a higher high. So we still needed to make that um, higher low, which looks like we put it in now. So now it looks like we're kind of reversing this, um, this downtrend, flushed a few people out with quite a deep, co deep correction, but now pushing higher. And I'm, my default is that we're heading back towards these highs, but just something again to be wary of is is that previous high. It's obvious enough, but um, but also in a slightly shakier market, people may be tempted to get out in this kind of vicinity where the price broke down. So in and around here, the sort of six 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 sixty six sixty kind of level. Okay. So, Germany-wise, there's not a, there's not a whole host of European data this week. The, the only one is uh, the German industrial production. So my feeling is that um, probably European markets are going to get largely pushed around by, well, I suppose there is the, the PMI data that gives us a good indication as to the economy, but also how the Athens stock exchange fares out. You probably didn't hear me at the start, but I was just saying that today, you've probably seen already in the news that the Athens Stock Exchange opened down over 20%. Some of the Greek bank stocks opened down, limit down 30%, the maximum limit down you can have on the day. <coughs> and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see them 30% down again tomorrow, because those Greek banks, as of now, are insolvent. So there needs to be some sort of bailout and restructuring package for them uh, to have any sort of hope of existence. So good that the markets are open but um, yeah obviously they're getting pummeled and that's 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 a source of worry for for the rest of the European indices and you know this German th Germany 30 being a big one <coughs> switching gears to the US good to um, let's just flick over this this weekly chart because I think it's, it's important to realize the general context we're in strong general long-term uptrend 
means that um, any of these corrections have been buying opportunities with the benefit of hindsight. But we've just got to look where we've been this year. This is basically kind of the base of this year. This is kind of the next level of base. And then this is the peak. So it's, it's, been, it's been uptrending, but, but rather sideways. And there's been plenty of times we've been up for the year, plenty of times that we've been down for the year. That's largely meaningless. That you, you know, something you hear in the press is, oh, we're up for the year, down for the year. I mention it in my notes. It's a sort of general gauge of sentiment, but it's not too significant. You know, the general direction of travel is what we're interested in here. And it was kind of upwards, and then you could argue probably as of March, it's been pretty much sideways. So we had a decent reaction last month. You know, it raises the possibility of a break of the peaks, but um, it's um, you know it's certainly far from a foregone conclusion. And you just got to be aware that when you are tra you know when you are trading on these lower time frames, you know this is um, sort of an interesting setup here where we don't seem to be able to got through to um, to 110. You know, with a kind of big spike through and a false breakout and potentially rolling over. Just remember that we are in the middle of the range, so even though that pattern is kind of promising, after a bit of a run up. You know, you just don't know quite how far it's going to go, if in fact it even does go, um, because we're in that range trading environment. And it's um, much the same in the US 30. One thing I was just noting, that, you know, that's something I mentioned last week, I think, is that you can obviously switch down to the lower time frames in search of trends when we are in a kind of longer term. Uh, sideways market. Um, obviously, with the the knowledge that these trends could turn around at different points, and they're not going to be as reliable as if when you're trending trading a short-term uptrend in a in the context of a long-term uptrend, you've got both those factors in your favour. At the moment, the longer-term trend is kind of sideways. Well, medium trend you could say is sideways. Short-term trend is going to going to change around. You can see that nice short downtrend, but reverse pretty quickly into a little uptrend here. Now we're stalling out for the time being. This could be a kind of double top formation, but it's quite a nicely defined range. So you're going to you have to be careful. The, the the trades that are most likely to work out are going to be the ones buying uh, buying at the bottom of the range, selling at the top of the range. But um, probably the most profitable ones will be when there is actually a breakout. Um, everyone has their different definitions to how to how to trade these breakouts. You can trade certain percentages above and below the bottom of the range. You can wait for a close above or below the bottom of the range um, but that's you know that's going to help you best but again we're in a kind of sideways market so you just don't quite know how far that breakout's going to go but I think a fair estimation would just be one of these lines that I've drawn above up here given the general uptrending market I think you know a break higher could terribly take us to this top line break lower you know I just don't know if you could get much below this line before then probably chopping higher again I don't, uh, just as a by the by, platform default is that RSI turns up on whatever time frame you're trading. <coughs> I tend to really only watch on the daily time frame. So you can see that we're still in this kind of range bound environment. Again, if you're selling here, you're selling not only in the middle of the price action, but you're selling in the middle of the, the RSI as well. So um, not the highest probability. So again, you just have to, it's not that you can't trade, but you have probably have to be a bit more conservative on how much you're targeting uh, as a profit. Hope that makes sense. Um, by the way, did say at the start, but uh, <laughs> you may not have heard. If there's any questions at all, please just send them through this uh, question and answer and question and answer area. And um, any particular any particular markets you would want me to have a look at, that you think maybe I wouldn't be otherwise. Um, yeah, again, send it through. Okay, we'll close all those out. So let's switch over to um, what has been. Um, a much more interesting and volatile area of the market. So, you know, these webinars, you know, they try to be as broad based as possible, focusing on generally the most popular markets. So I can't dig down to the very sort of small um, time frames. But, uh, you know, you can notice that generally on sort of daily to the weekly four hour type time horizon. Um, but you can see these, these commodity markets are being absolutely hammered. Um, just alongside a, a, a strengthening of the US dollar as well as some well talked about supply and demand issues in each one of these individual markets but I think gold and silver really look pretty interesting at the moment um, 
This, on the face of it, in, in gold at the moment, is a bear pennant pattern. So you had a sharp decline down. This is the this is the flag pole. And then this is the pennant, which is just like a triangle instead of a um, horizontal range. But you know, depending on how you draw your trans line, you can chop a few lows off and make it horizontal as well. You can see it a bit better on the um, the four hour chart. Now these are you know it looks looks all looks all good here, but you'll know from the chart forum that you have to adjust your trend lines a bit sometimes because for example I had this, we had a false break. So if you traded right on the break you wouldn't have got this, but if you'd waited for the high close, you wouldn't have got this. But if you'd waited for a move above that previous high you'd have been safe. But then kind of chopped down again. So then after that high was made, the general good rule of thumb is to move to move that high up. We've got a bounce lower here. Now we've made a new high and we're we're bordering on almost making this um this horizontal, but probably the more conservative breakout now would be through here. And we've obviously got this bottom trend line, which for now is actually working quite well. But again, this is based on the first low. To be more conservative, you could actually just adjust it slightly to the next low. So this is, you know, this buying and selling in this range in the short term is, um, you know, the kind of optimum trading scenario. Anything in the middle is, is pretty risky. Um, but, you know, this, based on this pattern, you know, you'd expect a, a sharp break lower. Silver offers a slightly, slightly different picture. Now, I think still, the trend is obviously down. And so, you know, we've got this trend line here, we've got this false break here. This one still seems to be kind of controlling the price action a bit better. Um, but no doubt a few people will have this one too. But what's interesting here is that we have some RSI bullish divergence. And that does for now seem to be supporting the price. Um, but, <coughs> you know, this could this could soon be undone if we get a break below this, what has become a, a rising trend line in the hour. So if we get a, a break down below there, then... Um, that could happen before the price makes a new low, in which case that would um, that would actually be more of a bearish signal. But for now, it's a slight bullish indication, and you'll notice that this, where we put this first low, we've not been we've not been able to close below it. We did a false breakout there, only closed at it there, and have been trading pretty much sideways with quite a few sellers, understandably coming in at the 15 level because the market is looking so bearish, but. You know, if we could more decisively break through this declining trend line, corresponding with this bearish di uh, di uh, bullish divergence, you know, there's a chance of a good snap back up to 16 again. Keep it, well, keep it aware. You know, we're below the 200-day moving average, so you know, there's only so bullish you can get here, but there's chance of a chance of a snap back, I think, based on this RSI. Excuse me. Okay. Now, obviously, oil has been the other big one that's been moving. Um, got Brent up on the screen here, but Brent and WTI are pretty much moving, moving in sync. Arguably, WTI is a bit weaker at the moment. Today, Brent is actually weaker, but WTI, um, just because it's got the additional factor that there's actually been new uh, oil rigs put back into production in the U.S., so extra U.S. oil production. As a kind of fundamental driver here, just coupled with that that rising dollar that's been hitting all the commodities, and the that um, Iran have announced that, um, in actually perhaps a shorter period of time than some people expected, they're going to be ramping up their production levels to to what was seen a few years ago before these sanctions came in. <coughs> Obviously, these sanctions look like being pulled out now, um, only gradually, but it looks like um, the sanctions are going to be such that this nuclear deal is going to allow them pretty much to get straight into producing at full whack. So that's an extra supply issue for, for oil. But you can see the trend here, not even reached the 200 day and just rolled straight down. Last month was the worst month for oil since the 2008 financial crisis, so you know, pretty bearish situation here. We've broken this low, and so the next area for consideration is where we've got this strong breakout. So that would basically be 
you know, you can be more conservative up here, but you know, we're already at that level, so for me, it's going to be more about um, this kind of little box area. Oops. Something along these lines. Because, um, yeah, so. A lot of people are going to be aware that we've broken that low, but not so many people are going to be aware of this box. So just be aware as we drip down right down to the the kind of key 50 level. You know, obviously that's a big psychological level as well. That could uh, that could find a bit of demand. So clear downtrend. But um, if you're short already or thinking about getting short, just be aware of that. Um, you know, this box and the key psychological level. And we've got this RSI um, downtrend line. Um, that would be something to watch. If, that, if you get a break above there, um, even a possibility of a cheeky, sh uh, cheeky long trade, but obviously keep in mind it's against that long-term trend. <coughs> okay, now um, how are we doing for time? Obviously got a bit of a delay from the old sound issue. Excuse me. Uh, now looking at currencies here, let's have a look at the euro. Difficult, difficult market to trade at the moment. It's definitely not much in the way of um, strong direction. You know, we've got a bounce off the low here. We made it up to um, the kind of basically the round number 111, but rolled off from there, came down to the next round number 109, up to the 111 again. You know, almost down to 109 again. So as you can see, not much in the way of a trend, um, and you know, if your stops are sort of wide enough on your trades, then it's certainly certainly been um, a good idea to pay attention to these round numbers because um, you know you can you, you can just go through these charts and just highlight where the round numbers have pretty much acted as the, um, as the as the kind of turning point for the price action. People aren't quite sure where to take the euro again. It all kind of probably relates back to exactly where the Fed are going. In terms of the um, the monetary policy there, but um, you know, just keep going. Obviously, it's not a perfect art, and if you uh, if you put it slightly, if you put it right on the round number, you might get a few narrow misses, like the one I just highlighted there on this low. Um, but equally, if you put it above, obviously, it can push through below it as well, and uh, you know, it kind of will push a bit above it in the case of a market moving higher into it. So then, uh, you know, again, it's not a perfect art, but, you know, there isn't much else pinpointing the, these turning points here because it's not like a defined trend where you're looking back to previous peaks or previous lows for reversal points. It's all quite range-bound. Dolly-Yen looks like one of the better opportunities for actually turning into a or resuming its long-term trend, but um, but my feeling is that we haven't quite gone far enough to the downside yet, and we may actually still roll over to the 122 vicinity, maybe this lower box before pushing higher again. I mean, this shallow correction was encouraging, and, I, and last week when we had the webinar, we highlighted this low, which did end up working, and um, we had this box area. So obviously the fact that we haven't gone straight down there. A, you know, it's a sign that maybe we never will, but I think it's still on the cards. Uh, Sterling, you know, basically we're in a tight range because we're just waiting for uh, this, this, you know, we're waiting for this Thursday. Um, obviously, the, the US dollar element plays its part, but um, some of the dollar pairs have been really trading strongly. Some of the emerging currencies that I'm not going to bring up here um, but if you have some facility for checking out strength of trends, so number of currencies above 21 day moving averages and things like that, you'll notice a lot of it's, uh, a lot of these dollar pairs are really rallying, you know, where the dollar is the, um, you know, the top currency um, inside the, the currency pair, you know, the dollar is really rallying strongly, but, you know, not against some of these major pairs, and the pound, it makes some sense that it's not, um, just because 
Well, the Bank of England are looking to raise rates at a similar sort of period of time as uh, the US is. So we're in a tight range, the breakout of which I would imagine will take place on Thursday. Um, but here's the, here's the top of it, which we're pushing into. Obviously, with the next logical level being the Form 59. Um, you, know, you know, I think if we do break out to the top side here, there's a good chance of a new high, but it's not a super strong uptrend, and so you've got to be probably prepared for some sort of pullback from that from that high. And just down to the euro pound here. You can see this is the kind of general pattern we're looking at. This is actually a declining wedge thereabouts. So this is actually a bullish formation, which um, would suggest a kind of push out, a breakout here, but we're not quite there yet. Some signs of it, um, as of Friday and today, that maybe this lower area will hold, but I suspect we'll probably get a kind of false break through the lows and then a push higher if this were to actually happen if we were actually to get a break out of this area. At the moment, you know, generally the way these kind of, you know, the box works with the kind of break lower, in a downtrend it, it comes off the bottom of the, uh, the box, but in a kind of range bound environment it will come up and test the top or even push through it a bit before rolling over. So, you know, we are in a downtrend, so <laughs> until we get a, a higher high made, um, that, that, that hasn't changed, so the bias to me would still be to the downside, but you've just got to be aware this pattern potentially is bullish. Um, yeah, we'll certainly just have a little look at the old euro yen here. With Especially if I can go back to my six. <coughs> So when you're referring to the, um, yeah, I can see where you're coming from there. <coughs> Scrap some of these. I mean, when you're talking about the um, head and shoulders pattern, you know, you're talking about something along those lines, I assume. And yeah, and I think, uh, you know, even if you don't believe it's necessarily head and shoulders, which, yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's messy, but they always are. Um, this is, is, a, is a clear level of support that's been tested three times, arguably four or five. The break of that, to me, yeah, would be, would be um, pushing us down to the lows. And it, I, have, you know, I haven't measured it here, but that, the, de the, the height of that head looks like it would pretty much nicely project us down to that low. So a couple of things in favor there. And as of Friday, we did have a nice little shooting star pattern here into that resistance. Um, so... So yeah, it's, it's, it's looking decent as a pattern. Um, I think can't get if I just um, got rid of it, but if I just add it in again. Yeah, and it's right at the 200 day moving average as well. So um, yeah, a lot of things going for this area as a resistance. Um, so you know, you could either do a kind of an aggressive entry into this pattern whereby you're just treating this area as a resistance to the moving average and with a very low risk. You know, if, you, if you're getting above, back above that high, you could argue the pattern's failed. Um, and, you know, you could wait for it to kind of resume itself again. Maybe if it rolls over again at the high, it wouldn't be the head and shoulders anymore, but it would be, um, you know, another opportunity. <coughs> but I think you know your risk here, much above here. Um, you could get in based on this, what is um, a good little failure break of the high there. Or um, or you could wait for a um, just a push through here or a close below you know, this support. And I think this is the kind of scenario where you, know, you always want to control your risk. Obviously, you could get a break below and it could push up again. So up here, it's a nice controlled risk above here. I mean, if you were looking for the break below the neckline, I'm never a fan of putting it right above the shoulder, even though that's technically what you should do, just because it leaves a lot of risk on the table here. We're talking about, what's that, 400 points? You know, you're going to have to trade a pretty small 
um, you know, much smaller lot size probably than you normally would to be able to sort of ride out that kind of loss. And you've got to ask yourself, if you did sell on the break here, and you're down 200 pips back into the range, would you realistically follow through on your trading plan to wait for a 400 pip loss before getting out? You know, you've got to also got to question whether you'd actually do your trading plan. You've got to have that discipline to actually carry it out. So then that, in that case, if you were going for a break of the neckline, you could maybe just have something in the region of 100 pips, and if it's pushing up that high, but it hasn't worked straight away, you can get out and wait for another opportunity if it breaks down again. This probably would be something more along the lines of, um, of my preference. Get out if it's not looking good straight away, and you can always get back in again, rather than waiting and sitting on some big loss, hoping for it to eventually go in your favour. Um, so yep, we're pretty much we're, we're about five minutes over now. So apologies again for the, that sound issue at the start. Um, hope it was still worthwhile. Good luck with trading this week. I'm going to call it a day there. Thanks a lot, everyone. Jasper Lord signing out.